Get up. Slow and control on the way down. Explosive on the way up. Hey, what's up guys? Gary Walker here with liveanabolic.com and welcome back for another video. All right, in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can build a big chest with nothing but light weights, all right? I'm gonna give you a couple different techniques you can utilize that's gonna allow you to build a massive chest even if you have light dumbbells and you're working out at home, all right? Before I get into these actual exercises though, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and then make sure you click on that bell icon. That way you get notified every time we upload a new video. All right, with that said, let's get into this actual video. Here's the thing. A lot of people assume to build big muscles, big chest, big back, big shoulders, you gotta be extremely strong and you have to have really heavy weights or you have to go to a gym that you have access to heavy weights, all right? That's not the case at all. I'm gonna give you some really cool techniques that is going to allow you to use a couple pair of light dumbbells if you have access to those, and you're still gonna be able to get massive results. Very first one we're gonna do is a pre-exhaust exercise. Here's what a pre-exhaust exercise is. Basically, when you're trying to really put size on a body part on a muscle group. Typically, you want to start with a compound movement. What is a compound movement? All right, for chest, that would be a bench press. The reason it's a compound movement is because you're utilizing more than one joint. Bench press, we're bending at the shoulder and also the elbow, all right? And you're using more than one muscle group to build the chest, to push the weight. So we're going to do something opposite of that. We're gonna be starting with an isolation exercise. Isolation, we're only moving at the shoulder, one joint. So we're gonna start with doing flies. So here's what happens when you start with an isolation exercise. We're gonna go lightweight flies for higher reps. We're gonna shoot 15 to 20 reps with the flies. What that does, it's gonna bring a lot of blood into the chest. Not only is it bringing a lot of blood into the chest, it's going to keep your triceps from getting exhausted from the heavy pushing movements or the heavy compound movements, all right? So that's where this becomes a compound set. Two exercises that work the same muscle group. That makes a compound set. So we're gonna start with the actual fly, get that blood flow going. We're gonna put the light weight down, pick up a little bit heavier weight. Again, it doesn't have to be near as heavy as it typically would be because you're already pre-exhausted. You've already got a lot of blood in the chest and lactic acid, so your chest is already gonna be on fire. So we're gonna start with the lighter weight of for the flies, put the lighter weight down, pick up a weight that's a little bit heavier, and then we're gonna go into the pressing movement. So compound movements we're gonna do. We're gonna do the flat bench flies followed by the flat bench press. The goal with these are four sets. Again, 15 to 20 reps, really get the blood flowing and get the lactic acid into your chest. Then we're gonna shoot for eight to 10 reps with the bench press. All right, so let's get set up. I will actually start, and let's start with 15s. You could probably do a little bit more weight, but we'll start 15s for the flies, and then we'll go maybe 45s for the chest press. All right, so again, you don't necessarily even need 45 pound weights. We're all starting at a different strength level because I've been working out for a long time. I'm a little bit stronger than most, all right? So I am still gonna start out light with the flies. Go ahead and go really light with the first set. Even if you think you can push more weight, let's start lighter as opposed to starting heavier. Really focus on the mind-muscle connection as well. Get good full range of motion on the flies to allow some stretching of the shoulder joints. You don't want your shoulders to start bothering you when you do these, so really start light. All right, so let me show you how to do these. I'll show you a couple sets here, one with each of these. Again, flies, nice, good stretch. And yes, I did go light, but again, this is the very first set. You wanna loosen up those shoulder joints. Good contraction. Good full stretch of the pecs. Good contraction, nice, slow, and under control when you're doing these. Again, the goal isn't to go as heavy as possible. It's to really make sure that your chest is doing all of the work. 
So that's the mind muscle connection I'm talking about. Full stretch of the pecs. Allow your chest to come across and contract at the top. Full stretch, full contraction. Again, when you're working in a fly uh, movement pattern, you never want to drop the weights too fast towards the bottom. It can really damage your shoulders. So that's why I'm saying slow and controlled. Control the chest and right there, the contraction. All right, let me show you a couple more of these. Again, your goal here is just really find a weight that's going to allow you to get that chest burn, get a lot of blood going into the chest and then that lactic acid into the chest. All right, so you will do your 15 to 20 reps here and then you're going to drop that weight. You'll pick up your pressing weight and then again, for the pressing eight to 10 reps. And you'll notice this is pretty much immediate. You don't wanna rest in between these only long enough to pick up the weight. Good stretch, good contraction. Same thing when you're doing these, you wanna make sure you have that strong mind to muscle connection. Allow for that good stretch and the contraction on the way up. Slow and controlled the same way especially on the way down. If you watched a lot of my videos, then you'll know I'm a proponent of explosive con uh, concentric contractions. Basically, eccentric is coming down nice and slow, three to four seconds, and you can go ahead and lift the weight explosively. Slow and controlled on the way down, nice stretch, explode the weight back up. So three more of these. One more. All right, so that would be your first set. All right, so basically what you would do here is rest 90 seconds up to two minutes. If you still feel fatigued, like you can't really lift any weight after 90 seconds, go ahead and take your two minute rest period. And we're gonna do this for four total sets. Flat bench, really opening up the chest, really focusing on that center uh, beefy part of your chest, all right? Trying to bulk that up. Once you've done these, we're gonna go into another compound set. Very similar, however, now we're gonna target the upper chest. If you have an adjustable bench, 30 degrees is what I like to utilize to target the upper chest more, because here's the thing. The benches that are incline benches that aren't adjustable, the standard incline benches that are already preset, they're typically at a 45 degree angle. I don't like this angle when you're trying to target upper chest. This angle is really hard on your shoulder joints, all right? Especially for older guys, it's one of those that I typically try to get you to avoid. So definitely look for an adjustable bench and shoot for the 30 degree incline right here. So you've done your four sets of the other compound exercises. Flat bench flies, flat bench press. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the incline, another four sets, same setup, all right? You still want to pre-exhaust the upper. You already can have a lot of lactic acid. Your chest is gonna be a little bit more fatigued. Typically, you use less weight with the incline than you would with the flat bench, especially so after doing the four sets of the previous compound movement. However, I started light. So for demonstrating this, I should be fine with the weights I chose for the flat bench. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with the incline. You've got your 30 degree incline, gonna lean back. One thing I want you to focus on when you're doing this is keep your abs tight and even try to press your lower back into the pad. The reason I say that, for an incline, you wanna be at this angle. You will see a lot of people really arch like this. And what you're doing if you're arching like that is you're adjusting the angle and turning this back into a flat bench. All right, you're just doing a flat bench when you're doing this. To get the full benefits, you wanna utilize the actual angle that you've set up, the 30 degree angle. So from here 
really focus on tight core and press the lower back into the pad. All right, to keep the shoulders safe when you're doing this exercise, depress your shoulders. Basically, get your shoulder blades and squeeze them together. All right, you're doing that, you're pressing your lower back into the pad, and now you're set up. Nice wide stretch. You should feel the stretch more of the upper chest now. Another contraction. All right. Same thing here. You want the higher reps. So light enough weight to where you can fail within the 15 to 20 reps. You don't want to do fives or tens if you can do 20 plus reps. That's a little too light. So again, when I say light, light is relative just as heavy is relative. It all depends on your current strength level. So typically 15 to 20, you wanna make sure you're still working. You wanna make sure the weight is heavy enough for you to still feel that lactic acid going into the chest. How do you know it's going in? Cause you're gonna feel your chest burning. If your chest is burning, that's perfect. That's what you want. Even if it takes the second or third set to feel the burn. First set, you may not feel a lot because you're just playing with the weights, starting a little light. But if it takes two or three sets to get that burn, that's what you want. You want the burn. Again, you're gonna do your 15 to 20 here. Lower that weight, drop that weight. Go straight into your pressing weight. Eight to 10 reps, same thing with the pressing weight. Keep that lower back pressed in. Abs and core tight, press straight up. Slow and control on the way down, explosive on the way up. Explosive on the way up. Show you a couple more. Slow, under control, good stretch. Press one more, slow, under control. Hold that good stretch. Press. All right. So it's going to be the same here as it was with the flat. Another four sets. So you basically got four sets of flat flies, four sets of flat bench press. All right. Then four sets of incline flies, immediately going to the four set of incline bench press with the 30 degree incline. All right. Now you're going to finish off with one other exercise. You're gonna do push-ups. However, I want you to do a decline push-up version. So what that means, you want a flat bench. You'll notice people call these incline push-ups because your body is in an inclined position. All right. The reason I refer to them as a decline push-up, this simulation is a decline movement. From here, you're going to come straight down and press straight up. This is the same as a decline movement. An incline movement, your hands are pushing up like we just did in the incline position. If you're coming down low, pressing high, that's an incline, which is why I don't call this an incline push-up. It's completely opposite. This is more of a decline movement. Decline chest movements are designed to work the lower chest, all right? That's what we're doing with this push-up. We've done the upper chest, we've done the mid chest. Although those exercises still target most of the chest, they don't isolate any particular area of the chest. So this one will give you some good isolation of the lower pecs. Again, one thing you're gonna wanna do with these, core tight, and you wanna lower your lower chest, all right? When you're lowering your body, hit that lower chest and Press up. The other thing you'll notice, I'm not just extending when I press up, bring these elbows towards the center of your body, almost like you're trying to get them to touch. By doing that, you're gonna get a better chest contraction. All right, let me do about three or four of these where I'm not talking so you can see me actually doing them. And four. So again, this is going to be done after you've done the four sets of the other exercises. So you're gonna be exhausted, you're gonna be fatigued. So it's gonna be a lot more difficult to do these. 
And I want you to do as many reps as possible on these. All right, that's gonna add that intensity. It's really gonna help finish off your chest. That's going to help you build a bigger chest. You'll notice I didn't use heavy weight at all. For some of you, the 45s may be heavy, but again, by the time you get to your second, third, and fourth sets, even the 45s are gonna be too heavy. That's the benefit of doing the pre-exhaust exercises first. You're already pre-exhausting your chest, so you don't have to go straight to that heavy compound movement. All right, so if you have any questions about this workout, if you have any questions about this, any of these exercises at all, or how the pre-exhaust technique actually works for hypertrophy or muscle growth, then comment below and let me know. If you like this video, man, give me a thumbs up so I know you like it and I can film more videos just like this. With that being said, that's all that I got. Get busy, get after it, and God bless.